welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixon. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. Oh, yeah. How about you? Man, living the dream. Living the dream. I thought we discussed a few months ago how the American dream was dead. Is it not the American dream? Some other, no, some I'm other living, dream? I'm just living a dream. A yeah. dream? Yeah. <laughs> My own personal dream. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, Don't have to be all patriotic about it. That's not, That wasn't the point. The American dream? Yeah. The American dream is that anybody can succeed and yeah. become a millionaire. Well, and, I'm not concerned so. with anybody. I'm concerned with myself. So. <laughs> have you succeeded and become a millionaire? Not yet. But I'm trying every day. All right. Every day I'm a day closer, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I, I, I just keep thinking, I had this um, professor when I was in high school who's uh, mostly history, but he also t- taught economics. And um, I really keep thinking, man, if I had taken better notes in his class, I could be a millionaire by now. Yeah. Yeah. Because that was part, that was like the last third of the class. Oh, really? Um, was how to be a millionaire by the time you're 40. Oh, nice. And it was just like a whole bunch of tips and tricks to save and invest and grow. Grow wealth. Yeah. yeah. Take take what you're bringing in and, and turn it into something over time. Yeah. That would be the, the yeah. idea. Yeah. He and his wife were both yeah. professors. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they're, they're not making millions of dollars. <laughs> no, yeah. No. Right. Um, you know, they were making tens of thousands a year in Alabama <laughs> at a high school. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, and it's not, neither of them was like prolific author or anything like that. But yeah, 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 it was just like, I think probably a third of that third was uh, how to save money on taxes. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. an important one. Yeah, how to avoid taxes. Like, I remember some of that stuff, but I, I didn't really take notes and I yeah. should have. Well, and that's an evolving thing. Like, what well, works one year may not work the next. Like. Um, I mean, you know, I mean, there's, there's a general lot of, ideas, I guess, but yeah, but the, the tax code changes. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was a lot of it was like how to write off your vacations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, okay. So I go on a vacation, but I also schedule a, um, work an thing. interview for work. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, and, um, you know, we take a vacation, but we also take a little side trip to do some research so that I can, <laughs> you yeah. know, that kind of thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I I never really have taken advantage. The of that. company I work for, um, the the high high ups like the um, I'll do that. They'll come to the Gulf and spend the week in, or spend the week and spend like one or two days, a few hours, just visiting stores, mm-hmm. making sure everybody sees that they've been in stores, and that's what they're doing. Yeah, is they're just out there to write it off. Yeah. Or they're in the stores <laughs> just to write it off. Yeah, you know, you know what's funny is the like the things that I remember was all the ways he was telling us how to make sure that it was documented. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, now like, I'm sure that's oh, that's yeah. the whole thing with them. That's the reason they mm-hmm. physically go in the stores. They don't just say they went in the store. I mean, mm-hmm. if somebody goes back and looks, there's a record that they were there. You yeah. Know? yeah, he was like, uh, you know, and when you get back home, you send a you send a message to that uh, guy that you interviewed with and say thanks for taking the time to meet with me. <laughs> all this right. stuff. Make sure to keep that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yeah. If you're um, ever audited. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Oh, and that was actually probably a good tip to share with everybody. Um, they can't do a general audit. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so if you ever get notified that you're being audited, yeah. um, you respond with for what years and what specifically, and you drill them really? down until the, you can't drill them down anymore before you agree to meet with anybody. Oh, wow. Yeah. I did not know that. I was yeah. not aware. Yeah, they can't just say, we're auditing you, bring all your stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it because, has to be for something specific. Yeah, because then they can rifle through your stuff till they find something. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that yeah, that's that's good information to have. Very good information. Yeah. If you learn nothing else tonight, <laughs> yes, learn to don't just <laughs> don't just uh, count out to the IRS. Make them tell you what exactly they're looking for. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um. All right. Well. I don't know. You you want to start with your thing a little lighter and sure we can start. So Alabama has um, both chambers in the Alabama House and Senate have passed a constitutional carry bill. So um, I'm not sure when it's going to take effect because um, Grandma Ivy still has to sign it, but mm-hmm. it's believed that she's going to. Um, and so you will no longer have to have a, a permit to conceal carry in Alabama anymore. And but I already you, paid for one. Well, 
Well, good news for you <laughs> is um, you still will need one if you leave the state. So mm. if, if you go to Florida or Mississippi or somewhere like that, you'll you'll still need to have a permit. Yeah. Um, so if I'm going to carry, if gun. you're going to carry a gun there, yeah. But um, but this is good news. Like constitutional care, a lot of states are starting to pass this more and more, picking up on it and doing it, mm -hmm. and and it's a good thing. It's a big win, I think. Yeah. Um, I, you're partly right. I think. Okay. Um, the fact that the states have to specify this. Yeah. So so is this, a bit of this, a loss. <laughs> this is where this is where it's irritating for people like us because. Mm -hmm. Um, this should have never been a thing. It never should have been a thing in the first place for you to have to get a permit to conceal carry. Yeah. Like that should have always been okay to do. Mm -hmm. But so it's one of those deals. It's a win because like we're at least heading the right direction. But yeah, you're right. We shouldn't, have, we shouldn't have ever had to have headed back this direction. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, at least at the state level. I, I'm actually not opposed to city ordinances and things like that. Yeah. Um, there is a historical precedent yeah. um, for uh, cities to be, you know, to check your, check your guns at the, at the, at the city line or yeah. whatever kind of thing. Yeah. But um, for whole states to, uh, to control people's firearms uh, in that way or, yeah. restrict or prohibit yeah um like it happens in a lot of states <laughs> yeah. effectively anyway oh yeah yeah, yeah. um the, it yeah shouldn't never should have never come to that well uh, i know um so I, I heard about all this and i was really excited and happy to hear it and then it, i kind of it, it kind of occurred to me all right well what's the next fight yeah I, well I, okay so let's go back to the i mean because there are probably people out there that are saying um, why should anybody get to carry a firearm? Okay, so this is a conversation that I've went back and forth with, with a few people because a lot of people have this idea in their head, and a lot of people, particularly in law enforcement, by the way, mm -hmm. have this idea in their head that, okay, well, now everybody's just going to, like something's going to change by this being passed. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is people who don't obey gun laws don't obey gun laws like this. Really, the only people a permit system is helping is the government, and it's hurting the people who follow the law. Yeah, uh, I mean they they're the ones who suffer from this the most. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, what it mostly comes down to is that um, you have the the all right. So uh, you have the right to life, property, and the means to protect them. Yeah. Like the, the first, the first two, like having the right to life, having the right to private property, that doesn't do you any good if you can't protect it. Absolutely. So inherent in those basic rights is the right to protect it in yeah. whatever way you see as being the most effective. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, my point kind of is the people who already didn't have permits, mm -hmm. this, uh, they, they weren't going to go out and get them. Like, I mean... Yeah, criminals are going to be criminals, yeah, one well, way or the other. It's like, the, this that doesn't. Adage this, of, uh, if you outlaw guns, only outlaws have guns. Exactly, yeah. exactly. This so so nothing will really change except for the law-abiding citizens. This will make things a little easier on them, mm -hmm. I think. Okay, what's so, your next step? Uh, yeah, so my next step is so I think driver's licenses are next. Uh, why do why do we need to go every four years and get a new driver's license? Like, what's the point of that? Like, it's eight years in a lot of states. It should be. I, hey, I'm all for extending it, but I think, I think that just do it. So, this is kind of what I, what I would propose: is okay. You look, the driving age is 16. You turn 16, mm -hmm. or whenever you decide to go. But most people go at 16. Um, you go. You take your driver's test. You pass, and they issue a, you a license, and that's the end of it. Why? It's good for life. It's good for life. Why should you have to go back and have that license renewed every four or eight years? It's well, not like you forgot how to drive between here and there. Well, here's like, a sticky point with that. Yeah. Um, you may not have forgotten how, but you may not be quite as capable as you once were. Like there are a lot yeah. of states that change the time between when you have to get your license renewed after you reach a certain age, yeah. 65, 70 years old, you have to go in there and, and prove that you can still drive well, a little bit more frequently. Haven't, and I have seen good reason for that. Well, I was, I was fixed to say, I've rode in quite a few vehicles that I felt like that was, 
that that's appropriate. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will say. I tend to believe, and this is just just me. I I don't believe that that's a place where the government needs to step in. Mm-hmm. I think that's a place where the family needs to step in. Yeah. Um. But sometimes that, they aren't around. But that and that's true. Um. But that's all the more reason why this person needs to be able to get around. Yeah. <laughs> what are they going to do if the state takes their license? You know. Um. Well. I, it's it's a <laughs> it's a tough situation. Yeah. But um, there's absolutely no reason why somebody midway through their life needs to go every four years and have their license renewed. Mm. It's nothing but a revenue collector. Yeah. Um, I yeah, mean, that, that's certainly the primary purpose. And something else um, I would, wanted... would you, uh, would you be in favor of, um, legislation to be able to revoke licenses under certain circumstances? I actually would support that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they would be few and far between. Mm-hmm. I'm not for just ripping people's license away for nothing, but all of that still exists now anyway. You've been not, in four accidents this year. <laughs> yeah, like maybe we need to reconsider. Maybe we need to like start you back over again. Yeah, <laughs> With reconsider the, your skill level. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe we need to take you back to a permit and let you do that for a year and then retake the test and see where we're at. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm all for that. Yeah. Um, but it's still controlled by the state though. Yeah, and that's a problem. So we're we're not living in a perfect world here. We're not mm-hmm. there to where we would want to be yet. Um, but I think that, you know, and I think even my position of having you go get a license in the first place is a compromise from the anarchist position of, mm-hmm. you know, everybody should be able to drive when they're ready to drive or when their family will let them drive or, yeah. you know, whatever. But, but you know, given the situation as it is, we've got to live in the real world. The government mm-hmm. exists. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. Once again, just like the constitutional carry, this would be a step in the right direction. So, And the other thing I wanted to point out is there's not unanimous support for constitutional carry. Oh, Law yeah, enforcement no is very, and like I say, I've had this conversation with people all week that are not not for it that they're just mm-hmm. uh, they don't think this is a good idea you know yeah. um for whatever their reasons are you know they had mm-hmm. i've heard a multitude of them um don't think that it's a good idea maybe law enforcement doesn't like it because they realize that at that point they um aren't as indispensable well, I, I think maybe it comes down to, well, if they can defend themselves, then maybe they don't need us so much. And maybe they come to realize that. Yeah. And, and I think that there's there's already kind of a an implicit understanding that um, where there are more private guns, there is generally less crime. Yeah, that, that's that's very likely. I think it's more basic than that. I think it just kind of boils. I know some people are going to dispute that too. It's like, well, what about the gang neighborhoods and so? No, no, no. Well, <laughs> but I think that's actually a good example. That gives more reason for them to stop somebody, find a weapon, and make an arrest mm-hmm. versus not being a somebody not being able to arrest somebody just because they have a gun on them. And that's going to be the law enforcement. Uh, I didn't side. understand that. Like so, so let's say you somebody gets stopped in a traffic accident, mm-hmm. and they have a gun and they don't have a permit. Well, now there's nothing they can do about that. Yeah. Whereas if they've got to have a permit, then they and they don't have one. That's a reason to confiscate the gun and make an arrest. Yeah. Um, well, is that necessarily a good thing though? Them being able to the person that has the gun not to. Be arrested. I think that's a good thing because yeah. I think everybody I mean, yeah. has I, now, and that's once again, this is just me. But I mean, I think an armed society is a polite society. Yeah. Now, no, because I, I tend they, to agree with you. I, I think that it actually um, avoids some escalation in yeah. uh, traffic stops and so forth. Yeah. Because the truth is, is if you stop this person and you have a reason to think they're going to do something bad with the gun, then you need to be able to s- prove that. Oh, well, this guy was was already being violent and now he has a gun. So Mm -hmm. we arrest him for whatever violence he's committing, but not necessarily because he has the gun. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. um, But that can be argued in the other directions as uh, you, you're more likely to have violent traffic stops where somebody gets shot. And, um, and I could say even on like our side of this, you could make the argument that, well, um, police stopping more people with guns means that police are more likely to shoot people in stops. Yeah. I mean, potentially. I mean, I'm, I can't really say one way or the other. Yeah. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. I, I, I don't think that that's, I don't I, think that that's true. I think what we're going to see here know. in Alabama is 
not much is going to change. Yeah. And I may be surprised about this, but mm-hmm. I just don't think a lot's going to change. I think that this is, it accepts for, you know, I won't have to go every so many years and get it renewed. Yeah. So. And pay that money to the state. Exactly. So, it wasn't a lot of money. But I'm, but I'm excited that this was able to get through, even though the, it's a pretty divided issue, mm-hmm. you know. And that's the reason I think that if there was a movement for the driver's license thing, that it could get through, too. Because I think you could make a, a strong argument that, that once you've gotten your license, there's no need to go get it renewed again. At I least think, until I, you're 65 or 70. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we can still debate about that one, too. <laughs> I'm not um, on the side of taking. I'm, I'm, you're I'm not, not on the side. I'm not advocating that <laughs> yeah. actually. Like, I, I didn't feel like you were, but but even if you are, like I mean, I think that there's, um, I think there's there could be support behind that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I do like the idea of a permanent license. Yeah, I, I think that there, I think a lot of people would get behind that. Yeah, it's better than yeah. having to pay oh, and go back to the DMV every yeah. four years. Although I think you can do them online now. It's not quite so bad, but still. I've been going to the DMV. I went this last time. And mm-hmm. something else just to mention for people, because there may be people out there that's like, well, you got to make sure you know you can see, still see well and mm-hmm. do watches. They don't do any of that. I went up there and got my license renewed. I'm wearing glasses. I have no restrictions on my license. And they saw me walk in and hand me the license and they didn't, n- nobody made the thought, oh, well, you don't have any restrictions on your license and you clearly wear glasses now. Maybe we should add that to your license. Mm-hmm. No, they don't do that. Yeah. That's not how it works. This is all a revenue scheme. <laughs> well, I actually, um, last time I renewed my license and, uh, actually I have to renew it again this year, but last time I renewed my license, they did do an eye exam. Um, did they really? Yeah. And, uh, and they were like, Ooh, you are just barely <laughs> yeah. where you need to be to not have any restrictions. And I was like, well, I, I mean, I wear my glasses when I drive anyway, but yeah. in fact, that's the only time I wear yeah. my glasses. Well, um, and then I always forget to take them into a movie theater and I'm like just far enough away from the screen, apparently at a movie theater that it's all a little blurry <laughs> to me unless I bring my glasses, but yeah, I don't go to the theater very much anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. Moot point. Anyway. Um, well, okay. So obviously, I guess obviously, uh the big talk topic is going to be war. Yeah. Um I I was now certainly we're going to talk about the Russia Ukraine thing um and maybe some other wars that are going on. Uh but I I I kind of wanted to talk about this in a kind of a very general very general way. Um I have been uh debating with my mom about this a lot recently. And, you know, uh, while I understand the perspective that um, Russia is evil and is attacking poor defenseless Ukraine or nearly defenseless Ukraine and I'd argue they've proved that they're not exactly defenseless. Well, yeah. (laughs) Um, And Ukrainians are a bunch of heroes just trying to defend their homeland. It's like, okay, I I get that. I don't agree with all that, but I I get that. Um, I, (laughs) I think I, I think maybe the point that I've been trying to get over to her uh, that I'm not doing a very good job of, and maybe I'm going to do a better job here on the podcast, All right. um, is that uh, the idea that um, that Ukraine is the good guys and Russia is the bad guys, I think that that is false. I think yeah. maybe the, the point that I'm trying to make to her is that there are no good guys. Yeah. It, well, and that it's all bad guys. Well, and this just goes back to in general, especially when you're dealing with nation governments, mm-hmm. there's never any good guys. Yeah. Like all the big governments are bad. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they're not, I mean, maybe some are worse than others and some are better than others. Okay. Maybe. Um, but none of them are the good guys. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's still massive governments and, mm-hmm. and government just in general isn't structured to be the good guy. Yeah. It, it's just not built that way. Um, and that's just me. So, so like that whole premise there is is kind of where I start. So to say that Ukraine, the Ukraine's the good guys and Russia's the bad guys. No, they're all bad. Mm-hmm. All governments are bad. Yeah. Well, and uh, you know, for those of you that think that um, 
that the Russian denazification of Ukraine was just a talking point. It's not. Yeah. Go look up right sectors, Voboda, the Azov Battalion, C-14 or whatever it's called. I mean, um, I may have that last one wrong. But yeah. like, there are neo-Nazi groups that have been incorporated into the st- structure yeah. of the state of Ukraine. Yeah. Um, and they seem to be very influential. And then, of course, uh, like the guy at, um, that was running for office, running for that House seat in Georgia that I yeah. talked to at the Libertarian Convention. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was like, oh, yeah, it's a it's a Nazi government run by a Jew um, whose family was, uh, you know, affected by the Holocaust in some way. I can't remember exactly, but, yeah. you know, so on. I'm like, OK, it's not to say that it's a Nazi government. Yeah. However, um, there are certainly but, Nazis that have been incorporated into the government there. I mean, we were talking about the, the guy in the. Um, Victoria Newland phone call from 2014 um, that they said that they didn't want him to be a part of the government. But they just wanted him to be, you know, there advising or whatever. And mm. that the, and I forget his name too, cause I'm terrible with names. <laughs> um, but the reason they didn't want him as part of the government is because of his connection to these neo-Nazi fascist organizations. Yeah. Um, and they didn't want him to be a face of the, uh, you know, American installed coup in Ukraine when, with, with these connections. Yeah. Right. Um, no, I mean, there's, it, it's really anybody that disputes that there's not a wing of Ukraine that has those type of Nazi ties mm-hmm. is, is just not read up and paid attention Yeah, because they're and, there. I mean, they're, they're absolutely there. And I'm not even saying that it was it, that it's a large part of the population no. or anything, but they have but they um, do outsized exist. influence as well. Yeah. And part of the reason that they have outsized influence is because they are armed and they have shown that they are willing to kill people that aren't on board with their plans. Yeah. Um, and uh, and Zelensky is one of those people. Yeah. Um, as we talked about last time, he came in as the peace candidate. He, he was going to, um, to uh, you know... Um, What's, <laughs> you know, as I get older, I just, like my vocabulary gets smaller and smaller. I don't quite understand how that happens. It used to work the other way. Yeah. And now, now it goes it, back it goes, the other yeah. way. Yeah. Um, so, but he was willing to compromise uh, with the Russians and he was willing to try and instate the, the Minsk Accords. Yeah. Um, and uh, there was a video circulating 2018, maybe somewhere in there. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, and it's all translated to me because I don't speak Ukrainian, but yeah. he was talking with one of these um, far right ba- battalions, Azov battalion or something like it, yeah. and uh, and and pleading with them to go along with the the Minsk Accords and so forth. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they just pretty much said no. Yeah. And uh, and then there was one of these guys, uh, the the leader of one of these groups that was um that openly said in an interview that uh yeah they that they would hang him yeah like yeah. that they would hang him in the streets of kiev if he went along with the minsk accords well yeah and the guy is i mean Zelensky has has done an about face on this yeah yeah he's changed this too yeah, yeah. Um, and I can't help but think that this is part of the reason why his, his life has been legitimately threatened by people who have shown that they are willing to kill about this yeah um and, uh, you know, there's a bunch of stories coming out of Mariupol now. The the people that are escaping from Mariupol into the Russian side yeah. um, are saying that they were held there by the Azov Battalion. Yeah. Um, there's the story um, that broke yesterday, maybe, um, about the theater in Mariupol that was uh, blown up by the Russians oh, so, with 1,200 people in there. Yeah. Um, but there's no evidence of, of anybody dead. Yeah. Um, and... The, the people that were escaping into the Russian side from Mariupol, and Mariupol is mostly Russian-speaking, by the way. Yeah. Um, the people that were escaping over there, the civilians that were escaping, um, said that the Azov Battalion was rounding people up and putting them in the in that theater, and that the Azov Battalion blew it up. Yeah. Um, we don't I know. Mean, who knows, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we don't know. Um, but, you know, the... To just assume absolutely that this one side mm-hmm. is... And, Naive. and and one of these arguments that I had with mom was about that maternity hospital that they keep talking about. Yeah. Um, and 
So maybe it's just, okay. Uh, Part of this certainly is that I have come to the point where anything that mainstream media says I am skeptical of. I just assume it's a lie whenever I hear it off of any of the mainstream news networks. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a reason for that. It's not like you just came to this all yeah, yeah. for no reason. I mean, just think about the last two years. Yeah, exactly. Um, that should be all that you need. But uh, yeah, I, I just assume that it that it's all that it's all lies at this point. And so um, she's telling me, uh, and I'd seen some coverage of the maternity award thing too, because it's and everywhere. It just, yeah, yeah, and it just didn't make sense to me. Yeah. And um, I said, yeah, I have I have doubts about that. Yeah. And she said, well, I, you know, I've seen the video of them, you know, taking these injured uh, pregnant women out and so forth. Yeah. I'm like, do you know that that wasn't video from Beirut in 2012? Yeah. Well, I that, mean, uh, and, she and was I've like, well, I see, you know, we saw the hospital. Like, you recognize that hospital? You've been to that hospital in Mariupol? You saw what it looked like before? Like, you know the in the... The pictures in that video are from there. I mean, what what makes me so suspicious, and I've said this before on the podcast with some mm-hmm. of these bombings, is it's the same video on every station every time. Yeah, and it's been the same way with this hospital bombing. Mm-hmm. Like the video they show on all the different, it's all the same video. Is there that few people on the ground there with a cell phone well, that I mean, can take some video? True. And then like really pay attention to the video. And and maybe most people just don't understand what a real casualty scene like that should look like. Yeah. Um, but you know, I saw the video hospital with all the windows blown out and um, you know, it's a three story hospital with over a hundred rooms, I think. It's yeah. supposed to be full. Yeah. Um you know, all the windows are blown out, uh, you know, there's wreckage everywhere, things are strewn about. Yeah. I didn't see a lot of blood. Yeah. In fact, I saw almost none. Yeah. Um, I didn't see and a lot. that is unlikely. Well, uh, ha, just, just think about, have you ever been in a car wreck or seen pictures of a car wreck from somebody that you knew afterwards, like before it got cleaned up, but after they yeah. pulled people out, yeah. there's blood everywhere. Yeah. Even in a minor accident, if, if somebody got cut on the head, there's blood everywhere. Yeah. All the windows blown out, all that glass going around and there's no blood. I, I just, I, I have, my, I have real severe doubts. And then, um, so when I said thing, that to mom, one, one more thing about that, just to, so something that people can reference that a lot of people that listen to this podcast may remember is think about the scenes after nine 11 yeah. and, and what the video we saw from nine 11. And mm-hmm. it's just odd to me that as much video and as much stuff as I watched from nine 11, nothing that I see from Ukraine just seems to hit that same tone. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this is a very developed country with people and, and more cameras now than ever before in history um, mm-hmm. available to people. It's just odd to me that there's not more. Vi- it, that's what's That's been my big sticking point from the beginning with this yeah. is that there's just how is there not more video of what's going on? And even the injuries that they were reporting on that three, three dead and 17 injured or something like that in a full hospital that was like a it looks like a quarter of it came down. If, if um, more of those people survived, why were they not out there everywhere? Like what yeah, you picture no from 9-11 where there was just people everywhere yeah, running like from the wreckage. Of, well, and a stream of yeah. people being pulled out of there, which yeah. like you see the video and it's the one woman the on, one, a on a gurney. Yeah. 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 So you've seen the same video that we're, that we're talking about. Of like course, it's crazy. And, and my mom was like, well, they, they had them all in the basement. No, all right. And I well, they know had to that, come out of the basement. Well, and I know that she knows better than this because she used to yeah. work at a hospital. Yeah. You can't you can't confine an entire hospital's worth of patients into the basement, at least not and treat them. Yeah, right. Um, and I don't know. the The whole thing just seems fishy to me. And yeah. and it's not that there aren't civilians dying. There are. Oh there, yeah. There's no doubt about that. I, I'm I'm not I'm not out here saying that the whole thing's a conspiracy theory. Uh-huh. Like even if the no, hospital was just, bombed to me, yeah. um, it was collateral. Yeah. Like the, it was near enough of a real target because it, it seems very clear to me that the Russians aren't actually targeting civilians in the way that they're claiming in the media because yeah. there just haven't been enough civilian deaths. There, there'd be a whole yeah. lot more uh, catastrophe in this yeah. if if they were actually like intentionally targeting civilians and you got to think about, and you know, I hate the, you know, here come the what about isms thing, <laughs> yeah. but 
Um, now, a couple of days before that hospital bombing, the Az- the reports were that the Azov Battalion had thrown all the patients and hospital staff out and took up firing positions in that hospital. Yeah. Like, that was going to be their Alamo or whatever. Yeah. Um, if that's the case, it was a legitimate target. Yeah. yeah. Um, and... But even if that's not the case, you know, uh, I, I it doesn't seem like it was the it would have been the target of the strike and have that little damn. I mean, that yeah, little it seems few like casualties. Yeah, there would have been. Um, and uh, you're you're talking about criticisms from a nation, the United States. Yeah. That feels fully justified in dropping a bomb on a wedding to kill one guy. Yeah. To kill dozens of women and children and innocents to kill one guy and considers that perfectly acceptable collateral damage. Yeah. So just bear that in mind when you hear them criticizing what's going on in Ukraine. Yeah. Oh. And I don't I, I don't advocate for either of those. Like I, oh, no. I think the US is just as guilty. Yeah, but, absolutely. Um well, I would still say more so guilty. Like I mean if you look at our last 20 years versus Russia's, Russia's last 20 years, like it ain't good for us. Like, yeah. we're, we're the bad guys more than we're the good guys. Yeah, uh, Russia's creating hundreds of thousands of refugees. Yeah, well, we've created millions in the Middle East. Yeah, absolutely. Millions. Yeah. Um, but here's, <laughs> here's really the point of all that, is that um, we are doing a disservice to, uh, to Ukraine by helping them at all. Yeah, I mean, I keep thinking about this old Sam Kinison um, uh, bit where he's talking about uh, uh, people starving in Africa, and he, you know, he says, like, I think I've got the answer to the the problem, the you know, the food crisis in in Africa. I think that the problem, um, what you need to do is just stop sending them food. Yeah. Now, he says, you send them moving vans and some guy to say, well, it occurs to us that we've been bringing you food out here in the desert for all these years, but there wouldn't be a food shortage if you'd live where the food is. <laughs> yeah. Right? And I, I'm not advocating moving all the Ukrainians out of Ukraine. It's their home. I, I yeah. think that they should be there. But my, my point is this, is that this is a war. Yeah. People are going to die. Absolutely. And the longer the war goes on, the more people will die. Yeah. It's true. And the the longer the war goes on, and the more difficult it is for Russia to complete whatever, whatever they're trying yeah, to do, their mission in there, the worse it will get. Yeah. Um, and all we're doing is fueling that by sending a billion dollars worth of weapons into Ukraine. And and you're absolutely right on that. And there's another point I'd like to make, just as far as the idea that we're openly giving weapons and support to the Ukraine mm-hmm. on the other side of, with Russia. Um, and that is just think if when we went into Iraq and Afghanistan, if uh, Russia had immediately started arming the other side. Yeah. How do you think that would have went? How would we have handled that situation if we were going into a country and the others and the Russians were openly supporting the other side? Yeah, I, I would say that, frankly, um, anyone sending weapons to either side is participating in the war. Well, and that's exactly my point. And there's all of this talk, and rightfully so, that we can't be in direct combat with Russia because mm-hmm. of the nuclear weapons. And I agree with that. Mm-hmm. But what we're doing as far as supporting the other side mm-hmm. is no better. Yeah. Like, I I mean, to me, I can't see the difference between the two. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't. Other yeah. than you're, you're looking at not being in a retaliatory back and forth, but you're still openly on the other side of a conflict that really doesn't involve you anyway. Yeah. And well, um, the, the emphasis should be on nego- negotiating a ceasefire. Yeah. Um, what the U S should be doing if it's involved at all is encouraging Zelensky to take the deal. Yeah. Okay. Y- you're, it's, he's it's, already saying, well, I see that we weren't really going to be NATO anyway. Yep. Yep. That's yeah. right. You fi- I'm glad you finally figured that <laughs> the out. The last horse crosses the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. So all that Russia is asking as I understand it at this point, the the yeah. things that they don't seem to be willing to budge on um, are that to recognize Crimea as part of Russia. No. Hey man, that's a fait accompli. It, it's already done. It's done. They, yeah. They've said that they want to be part of Russia. Like nobody, there's Russia no way. Russia has taken them in. Yeah. Ukraine like, could possibly make a case that they control Crimea. Yeah. In any way. Yeah. 
just there's just no way. Yeah. Crimea is Russian. Yeah. Give it up. Let it go. Yeah. yeah. Um, the the two Donbass regions, giving them independence or giving them the Russia, I don't think it much matters. Yeah. But all Ukraine do, is doing by trying to maintain those two regions that are fighting them is wasting resources trying to bring in a, a group of people that don't want to be governed by them. Yeah. So it's actually better for the Ukrainian nation state to just let them go. Absolutely. Is it really worth fighting over? Yeah. Obviously not. <laughs> yeah, it, do, it doesn't seem like it to me. Um, as far as the demilitarization, Russia's pretty much already taken care of that for you. Yeah, right. Uh, so there's there's no sense in if I was fighting if, if I that. was in Ukraine if I was in charge of Ukraine my only sticking point would be okay we'll shut down our military and stuff but our citizens can still keep their weapons oh yeah sure that would be my sticking point we're not going to let you um, take the weapons from the citizens mm -hmm. and shoot I, I, I think I would kind of make it a sticking point yeah any tanks that farmers and stuff have confiscated we'll let them keep those too yeah but as far as the organized military all right you want to take our well I mean there there's um you don't want to push it too far. And I think, yeah. actually, I think this is one of those things that Russia would probably negotiate on. Yeah. Um, just because we saw the results of trying to completely demilitarize Germany after World War One. Yeah. Everybody's learned the historical lesson there. Yeah. All you, all you did was make them, uh, you know, build up in secret and try again to break out. Yeah. Um, and Russia doesn't want that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really think so, so that, there's, so, yeah, so there's that some, Peter Van Buren's right, and all they really want is a buffer. They just yeah. don't want NATO and NATO weapons right there on their border. Yeah. And guess what? The reason why you know that is because he has said this well, yeah. <laughs> over and over again. Sometimes you just have For to listen. For 15 years. Yeah, you just have to listen <laughs> to the other side. And maybe you don't agree with him, but at least understand the argument and where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, so now we have decided to give another billion dollars worth of weapon. Okay. Yeah. Even to back up a little bit more. Um, the suggestion to Ukraine that the West, NATO, and the U.S. is willing to give them military support and, and um, materiel, et cetera, even money. Yeah. Um, all it does, and particularly this, we're going to give you $1 billion worth of weapons. Um it just encourages Ukraine to persist in this war. Yeah. And the best thing that they could do is to, to just, to just end it, to yeah. negotiate a ceasefire. Yeah. Um, because the only result is that it'll take longer for Russia to achieve its goal and more civilians will die. Th that's actually, that's actually the best case scenario yeah. because the worst case scenario is that Zelensky gets what he wants and NATO and the U S get involved in this. Yeah. And it escalates to nuclear war. Yeah, because that's the real threat here. Like at, at the end of the day, that's the that's the most dangerous thing. And and you're right, Zelensky is relentless in trying to make exactly that happen. Right, and that's the only way. And I, I hate to tell all of you Ukraine fans that are waving the blue and gold, um, that is the only way that Ukraine could defeat a Russian invasion is if NATO and or the U.S. get involved. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's the only way. And 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 bear in mind, because I know I've said it before on this podcast, that you know the, Russia hasn't been as efficient with this as they thought they were going to be. Yeah. But they're not going to lose. No, like, no. Like the, if, if Russia wants to take Ukraine and hold it, they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, just like you said on the last podcast, it may be nothing but a graveyard between... It, Ukraine may turn between the Dnieper River and yeah, <laughs> exactly NATO, but they're gonna win. Yeah, like I mean, there is no like I say, this is this whole like been holding them off and stay, and doing the fight and giving them a hard time. Yeah, that's all mm -hmm. fine and great, but you're not gonna win this. Yeah, I mean, to me, like I looked at that uh, billion dollars in weapons thing, and you know, again. I think that that just makes the U.S. a part of the war. It does. Right? Um, and I just, <laughs> I can't imagine um, somebody being attacked. Like, if you take it on a personal level. Yeah. I can't imagine somebody being attacked and saying, 
oh, that guy standing right next to him that gave him the crowbar. He wasn't a part of he this. He wasn't a part of that fight. Yeah, exactly. That's not <laughs> yeah, how any of this works. It doesn't make sense. But when I, I saw that billion dollar weapons pledge, I thought here, the, what what's really happening here is that the U.S. government has decided to take $1 billion from the U.S. citizens yeah. to pay to kill Ukrainian civilians. Yeah, because that's ultimately where, what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. I mean, you may think that you're defending them, you're helping them defend, defend themselves, themselves yeah. but all you're doing is prolonging the inevitable, and the longer it goes, the more people die. Yeah. The goal here should be, the primary goal here should be avoid nuclear war. Yeah. Which means U.S. and NATO need to not get involved, and I'd say yeah. at all. Um, give yeah. them nothing. Yeah. Give them nothing. They're on their own. The sooner they realize they're on their own, the quicker they'll make a they'll negotiate a settlement. Yeah. Um, they're but on the, their own. The problem and with the that second is, thing though is is getting exactly to that to negotiate a ceasefire. You got to put yeah. an end to this, yeah. and escalating it does not end it. Yeah. Well, the problem is, and the reason that that's not going to happen is because NATO and the U.S. are the reason we're here in the first place. Mm-hmm. They have they have encouraged Zelensky and the Ukrainians not to give an inch this whole time. Right. And that's why we're where we're at. If we weren't involved in this at all, this would have never came up and happened. Yeah. I mean, if, if we hadn't been dangling NATO um, membership over Ukraine— this wouldn't have ever even happened. Mm-hmm. Like, we wouldn't be here. And those ultranationalist Ukrainian groups wouldn't have as much influence in that country if it hadn't been for the support of the CIA and the coups. There you go. Absolutely. Like, this this is a monster of our own creating. Yeah. Um, to, the, to the point that, and I don't like to get all conspiracy, but you almost have to wonder what the end game is here for us. Yeah. Like, why have we inflamed things to the extreme point that we have? And, and I don't know the answer to that. And I, don't, I mean, I, I think that is just as banal as it always is, which is that there are a lot of people that make a lot of money off of this. Maybe so. It's a dangerous game for the planet, though. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I've said it before, too, but I just can't imagine being one of those people who benefits from this and being able to sleep at night. Yeah, well, that's not a problem for too many people. It's not a problem too for people. too many people, and I know that, and that's just that's the reality of the world, you know. Mm-hmm. But I'm not yeah, one of those people. And they're people. a very small percentage also, but... But they're there, and yeah. they're in power, so... I was actually thinking, this is a little off topic, but um, I was actually thinking that... Uh, yesterday, maybe today, um, that all government really does is create an avenue for the worst kind of people to be successful. Yeah. Oh, there's so much <laughs> truth to that. You know, you can find the, you can find the example. Even, I, I'm going to flesh that one out. We're going <laughs> to, we're yeah. going to talk about that for real sometime, but yeah. Um, but this, there's this definitely, is something there's something there be. though. And not yeah. just at the top levels, but even at the low level, mm-hmm. Mr. Inspector to come make sure, you know, whatever, you know, yeah. um, like your car is up to spec or whatever. Like <laughs> these, these people would not make it in the free market. <laughs> well, and, um, you know, in terms of, I'm kind of surprised at the things that people are getting really upset about. Uh, I mean, not in the sense that they shouldn't be upset about it, but I guess the reasoning for being upset about it. Um, So the two things that stood out to me the most were uh, that um, Putin apparently said, and I couldn't find this, but um, Putin apparently said that that he would bomb, um, that they would attack convoys on the humanitarian corridors. Yeah. Uh, if they were transporting weapons or if they thought they were transporting weapons. And this was seen by a bunch of people as an excuse to just, you know, kill a bunch of civilians walking down the road or whatever. Yeah. Um, I was a little surprised at the, at the outrage about that for a couple of reasons. I mean, like I, I get that, that it can be spun to be, oh, well, he, it just creates an excuse for him to kill more people. Yeah. But really, if you look at this war so far, yeah. um, Russia has gone to great lengths to minimize civilian casualties, yeah. it seems to me. Yeah. Um, or there would be a whole lot more of them. Yeah. I mean, it would be very easy for Russia to... To like, have killed way more people. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Um, the it, it seems and to be very that controlled. Maybe why they've had such a slow crawl to get to where they're going. I think it's a big part of that. Um, and and that's not something I hadn't really considered till just now. Mm-hmm. But like maybe that is a big part of it that yeah. they haven't put in the rubbleizer the way that they could mm-hmm. have. Yeah. And that they're capable of because um, we know they're capable. They have limited amounts of uh, of um, uh, smart weapons. Yeah. Smart. What smart do we call weapons? them? Yeah, smart no bombs, right? Smart like, bombs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the directed, uh, that can be uh, so precisely directed oh. and so forth. Yeah. Precision. Precision. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That's the word. Um, they have, uh, they don't have a lot of precision weapons. And so yeah. they, that that's a big part of the reason that, that I think that there's been such a slow crawl in this. Yeah. Is that they have gone to great lengths to avoid civilian casualties in a lot of places. Yeah. Now, part of that may be that a lot of the cities that they have um, encircled are high percentage of Russian speaking, you know, Russian ethnic group peoples like Mariupol. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it, regardless, yeah, uh, they have um, avoided civilian casualties to a great degree, considering yeah. what's going on here. Yeah. Um, and so as far as uh, bombing convoys on the humanitarian corridors, if they think they're transporting weapons, um, what I would point out about this is that the uh, people fleeing the combat zone are in almost all cases yeah. going to be going in the opposite direction yeah. of the weapons. Yeah. You, you got people leaving the cities trying to flee into other countries and you got other countries trying to transport weapons into Ukraine. Yeah. Right. Isn't that what's I mean, what's I would happening? Just, I would here? assume so. Yeah. So if you see, you know, a bunch of trucks on their way from Poland, <laughs> yeah, into Ukraine, chances are those are not people trying to escape. Yeah. The the war. <laughs> They're trying to escape into the war. What are you talking <laughs> yeah. about, Mike? <laughs> um, the other thing is uh, they bombed. Um, they they uh, struck a military base just 15 miles from the Polish border. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, it's a military base in the country that they are at war with. Yeah, perfectly legitimate target. Yeah, um, you know, in terms of like if you're accepting war at all. Yeah. Uh, but I don't see anything. I mean, no, I don't want to say I don't see anything wrong with that. But I think that that is a perfectly legitimate military target for the military of Russia to strike the Ukrainian military inside Ukraine. So once again, the, when I heard about that, my first thought was, okay, that's all well and good. But what if they had missed that target and hit something inside Poland? Yeah. Well, then now, there would definitely be a problem. Yeah. You're, but, you're just skirting that edge of, all right, we're getting close here mm-hmm. to, to an area we shouldn't a line we shouldn't cross. Yeah, well, I guess Ukraine should have set up their military bases right on the borders. Then. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. I mean, 15 miles is pretty close to the border. It is. So, I mean, and, and it's like... They have complete control of the skies, though, Russia does. Yeah. Um, I think that they can be that precise with an airstrike. Oh, I'm not saying they can't, but, you know, things do happen. I mean, you're still yeah. dealing with people here, you know. Yeah. The mistakes can happen, and you're just making... <clears throat> and like I say, I'm not saying that... Because I agree with you. I mean, it's a legitimate target. It's a military base mm-hmm. in the middle of a war. Like, obviously, that's, that's you know, within parameters. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying flirting with danger is all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah I, I, I see what you mean. Um, and uh, let's see. Then two other things that I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on um, before we close out here. Uh, one is um, the... Chemical and biological labs, re- oh, research yeah. labs. Yeah. Um, I just want to point out, uh, actually, I, I guess these two things can be related, so I'm going to start with the other one. Um, I am very irritated that I can no longer a- access RT on YouTube because I live in the United States. You should move to a country where you should move to Russia. <laughs> you watch all the rock tea you want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In English still? Anyway. I don't know um, about all that. Maybe you can get subtitles up there. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, now, I think it is it is absurd that uh, YouTube would close down um, these stations. It says not available in your country. That's yeah. what happens if I try and go to, try to the RT live stream. Yeah. yeah. Now, 
Of course, the reason is um, that it's misinformation, and but I, I am incensed with the idea that I can't be trusted to hear the opposition's point of view. You can only hear our propaganda. You don't get to hear Russia's propaganda. Yeah, and l- like I've said over and over again, I am fully aware that everybody is lying. Yeah, absolutely. Right, but the more sources that I can check, especially sources that are in opposition to each other. Yeah. The more, the better I am able to determine to like suss out what has really happened. Exactly. Um, and it, and so I was thinking about this because one of the big reports that keeps coming up over and over again is that, uh, Russia is jailing dissidents. They're jailing people for, uh, spreading misinformation in Russia about the war. Yeah. And I thought like, how far away are we from that? Not, I mean, you ha- you've you got public officials all. that have called out for investigations into people that are... Um, Spreading misinformation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which includes, um, I don't think that we should get involved in this. Yeah. Like, we are spreading misinformation according to all these sources. Now, I'm pretty confident about the information that I present on this podcast. Yeah. Um, I, I certainly don't uh, present information that I know is false. Absolutely. Um, and, and and I try really hard to make sure that the, that I have solid reasons to believe the information that I do present on the podcast. Absolutely. Uh, did your chair just break? <laughs> no, it didn't break, but it moved and it was startling. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and, and then I thought about, um, uh, the, like, um, uh, accusations of treason to, uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah. For speaking out about this, and then, and then, of course, part of what she was speaking out about is the um, the bio labs, yeah, uh, that have been admitted to by our government. Yeah. and so I'm going to be very careful here and not call them bio weapons labs or yeah. chemical weapons labs. They are, you know, biological research labs and chemical research labs. Yeah, but the difference between chemical research lab and a chemical weapons lab and a biological research lab and a biological weapons lab is semantic. It is. Um, if you are experimenting, if you're doing gain of function research to make um, some kind of pathogen more effective, more deadly, more contagious, more whatever, like what was going on in Wuhan, yeah, and like what appears to have been going on in Ukraine, yep. Um, just because you say that you're not intending to use it as a bioweapon, you are still creating a bioweapon. Oh, absolutely. No, when I heard that, I kind of wish we had some clips where they were, where the U.S. officials were talking about exactly what we have there and what they know about what's there, Mm -hmm. because it really tells you everything you need. I mean, in their own words, tells you everything you need to know if you just listen and pay attention. And I've paid attention any the past two years um, about what went on in Wuhan. Um, I mean, this, this is no different. Like these, we are, they can say these are Ukrainian labs and whatever, but these are our labs. <laughs> yeah. Well, and regardless, we were funding dangerous research or yeah. research and we were creating dangerous substances in this lab, whatever yeah. the purpose for them was. Oh, absolutely. And so can those things be misused? Yeah. Oh, Absolutely, yeah. they can. Yeah. So just because you don't call it a bioweapon doesn't mean it's not a well, bioweapon. And they say very flatly that we don't want these these labs to fall into Russian hands, yeah. being the wrong hands. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, I wonder why. Yeah. Like, why would it be such a priority for these not to fall in the Russian mm-hmm. hands? Maybe if we weren't producing them on the not on their border, but in the country next to them, we yeah. wouldn't have so much to worry about them falling into their hands. Yeah, and if it's legitimate biological research, like they're saying, to help prevent future diseases and so forth, if, if it is beneficial research, yeah, why would you be trying to destroy it? Yeah. And why would why you, would you why would you even care if the Russians got a hold of that kind of thing? Yeah. Well, and why would you be doing it in a country a world away? Yeah. Well, there's that too. Um, and uh, then, of course, the other thing that uh, that has been circulating a little bit is well, these are just Soviet era um, bioweapons labs that we we're helping the Ukrainians to destroy and dismantle. Well, first off, we've had eight years. <laughs> yeah. How hard could that possibly be right. to torch it? Um, secondly, if that were the case, I'm pretty sure that they have that same research available to them in Moscow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
Exactly. Uh, they lost it there, but it's still available in Ukraine, right? Yeah. So I, I don't know. The the whole thing is a yeah. The whole yeah. thing is just a bunch of lies. And uh, you know, was <laughs> well, I don't know. And then it leads to the whole false flag thing, which I don't even want to get into because we don't have time. Um, but the uh, you know, there's just been a continuous setup um, for um, Russian use of biological or chemical agents in Ukraine. Yeah. Oh, they're going to do it any day now, any day. And I know that that sounds the same as the beginning of the invasion, which we said wasn't going to happen and then did. Yeah. But this is another one of those things like this, the Assad thing. Yeah. Um, where it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially well, considering does, that they make... seem to have been going out of their way to avoid civilian casualties. Why in the world would you do something that would immediately, immediately bring the West into the war? It does make, so it does make sense, but it only makes sense for one side to use them. Yeah. Not the other. Because the, the Russians would have nothing to gain from this. If the mm -hmm. Russians wanted to destroy that country, they're more than capable of doing it with conventional weapons. Yep. Um, and not using the, these chemical weapons and stuff. Mm -hmm. there, there's no upside to them for doing that. No. Nope. Um, but there is an upside for the other side. Yeah. It is counterproductive for the Russians to use chemical or biological weapons in Ukraine. Yeah. In, in any form, because there's nothing that they can do with those that they can't do with the conventional ones. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it just it, it wouldn't make any strategic sense, even aside from the flack that they're going to get from the rest of the world. It just it wouldn't make any strategic sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, that's uh, that pretty well covers it, I guess. Do you yeah. have anything else? I, I really don't. I think we I mean, like I say. I think we've pretty well covered everything. You made sure that everybody knows we're Russian agents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. Like disinformation. Agents. There's, the, I tell you, man. There's just there's so, the propaganda is so heavy. Like it's it's really hard to watch the news right now, and mm -hmm. and it's all of them. They're all the and like we talked about the the same videos, the same message. It's just beating the war drum man and it's amazing how effective it is to me um because I, I don't remember what the article was about that i was reading but uh it, whatever article it was about the russian ukraine war and it was a yahoo news article yeah. um you know a reasonably mainstream internet uh news article and uh at the bottom of it you know it had the comments and i was like all right what well, because i read through it and i was like man there's like how do people not see through this? Yeah. And so I, I yeah. opened up the comments, which was a huge mistake because it was so disappointing. I'm like, I'm so disappointed in my countrymen. <laughs> so I, I live um, in the comment section of things like that. Like I, I will read the article. I, I go almost sometimes I'll just read the headline and then go check out the comments because I just want to see what people are saying and what people are doing. Remember the headline thing. Bring me back to that uh, okay. once I'm through with this because one other thing that I, I want right. to point out. This is... This podcast will never end. Yeah. Um, so I, I go to the comments and I, I only read like the first six or eight yeah. comments. And they're all about how the U.S. needs to get involved. The U.S. needs to send troops and weapons. The U.S. needs to impose a no-fly zone. The U.S. needs to do this. The U.S. needs to do that to help those poor Ukrainians. Yeah. And um, the comments behind them, sometimes they're asking some questions, but they're not really challenging. And every single one of them was all upvotes. Yeah. Yeah. There wasn't a single downvote on any of those warmongering comments. Yeah. It's, and I, it's I was just blown away. But like, there's not one person who has the Kurt. Now, I wasn't signed in, so I could. So, so, so you weren't that one person. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah, I had just signed out and I wasn't about to sign in just so that I could downvote these, all of these comments. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I just couldn't believe that there wasn't, that nobody who had read through this. At that point, and there were yeah. fifteen hundred comments on the article oh, yeah. at this point. I, I mean, yeah. um, that nobody had downvoted any of those stupid ideas. Yeah, from my perspective, stupid ideas. Oh, let's yeah. get involved in World War Three. Yeah, well, I'm telling you though, it, it goes back. Nobody said no. <laughs> it's it's the programming, man. Yeah. Like, and that's what that's what the the machine is pushing right now. Mm -hmm. 
Well, um, and and here's the scary part of that is the a, a lot of people only read headlines. Yeah. Um, and so I saw a headline. I, I will. I want to skate. I normally do read the articles, but sometimes, <laughs> but but I I enjoy comment sections because I like well. And I I like the comment section because it gives me an idea of what people are saying. Yeah. Um. And uh, granted, usually you don't want to know what people are yeah. saying. It just <laughs> like, makes me it's, sad. It's, it makes you sad. But yeah. but I like to to get a check the pulse of what's going on. Yeah. You know. Well, uh, so I I saw a headline. I don't remember if it was yesterday or the day before. Um. And the headline was uh, Russia's advantage in um. Or something like this. Okay, I'm not going to get it right, but yeah. it was like Russia's advantage in tactical nuclear weapons isn't really an advantage. Yeah. Now, if you actually read the article, yeah, um, it does go on to comment that the the reason that it's not an advantage is at the point where they're using more tactical nukes than the U.S. can use because the U.S. doesn't have as many. Yeah. There's been so many nuclear. Uh, explosions that it's really kind of irrelevant. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. That's the point. But the way the headline reads yeah. is that it's okay if this goes nuclear because their advantage in tactical nukes isn't really an advantage. Yeah. I mean, like that's that's, that's the impression you would get from yeah, reading so, the headline. Like somebody who doesn't know any better that's just reading headlines is like, oh, well, um, so it thinks maybe the argument that we shouldn't get involved in Ukraine because of nuclear weapons, that doesn't mean anything. That's it's not really an advantage for Russia. So who cares? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just, that's scary, man. Mm. Um, the one thing I'll say that we can kind of close on, I guess is something that, so I watched the, uh, documentary thing the other night and it was the, the rise of, um, fascism in Italy mm -hmm. and, and they kind of just like done a timeline starting from the beginning, how Mussolini rose to power and stuff. And, it's just something that everybody kind of needs to pay attention and think about. Mm -hmm. Like, like these type of movements and things like rise up and it, it starts with propaganda and it comes from propaganda. Um, and like, so a lot of the tactics, and controlling information, controlling though, like not information, allowing you to see the opposition's point of view. Like that's, that's how bad things rise up. Mm -hmm. Um, and cause that's what happened. A lot of what happened in Italy and yeah, some of those tactics wouldn't work here, but a lot of those tactics are being used right now, yeah. right in front of us. And people just need to be aware of that and conscious of that, mm -hmm. that, you know, this, this whole censorship and controlling information, especially when you're allowing the government to be the one to do that is mm -hmm. dangerous. Yeah. Um, well, even if you're just looking at Facebook or YouTube, it's become very clear that the government is involved in, in that. Yeah, well, um, that and goes has back. made actually open threats from the mic. Like Jen Psaki has made open threats about uh, controlling Cold, information. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, to the whole well, governments are uh, not government. Government the, that Facebook's a private company and they mm -hmm. can do what they want. That is no longer a case or an argument because yeah. these companies are not acting as private companies anymore. They're mm -hmm. acting as arms of the government, and the reason is is because the government has stepped in. Is like you're either going to do what we say or you're going to do nothing at all. Yeah. And what are you, you, you know, you've got to, you're Zuckerberg or whoever the hell it is, mm -hmm. you know, what, what are you going to choose? Yeah. You know, and our you, legislation is limiting the competition for you so you can make good, healthy profits. Absolutely. And yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There you are. Um, this is not a free market. Nope. So uh, just something to think about. I, I watched that it document and I, like I say, that's what I took away from it. And I mm -hmm. feel like that's, that's something that everybody needs to be conscious and aware of. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. On that happy note. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we ran more than an hour again. Nice. Oh, oh we have, a, we have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I could keep going, but <laughs> it's getting warm in here and it's late and I'm hungry. Yeah. So, uh, so next week we're going to do Thursday again, right? It's another double header Tuesday. I'm not sure. I, I'm pretty I, sure I that's wanna, what your wife told me. <laughs> yeah, well, you would know better than me then because I'm not sure. I, I, I will commit to nothing. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll be back next week, either Thursday or Friday or Absolutely. Saturday or Sunday. We, yeah. we will be back there. Don't, don't fear. You'll get another hour of the Liberty Mike. Absolutely. Um, misinformation podcast. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll be back next week. Um, in the meantime, try to, or don't try. Do. Do. <laughs> <laughs> Follow us on uh, 
Facebook. Um, you can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, and or YouTube. Uh, like and share, comment, um, tell your friends, and all that stuff. Uh, and uh, to keep us coming back week after week. Absolutely. And uh, we'll probably do this anyway. Yeah. I, I'm not creating the kind of incentive that I want, I suppose. <laughs> I, uh, oh, well. Um, so, uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Later.